Welcome to Campus Middle School Library Overdrive Training. My name is Mr. Phelan and I'm the librarian. Before we start, I want to share a few reasons why you might want to consider ebooks as opposed to traditional books. Getting ebooks is easier and it's instantaneous. Before, if you finished a book at night or on the weekend, you'd have to wait until Monday morning to get a new book. With ebooks, you'll have access 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And not only will you be able to check out books on weekends and at night, you'll also be able to check out books over winter break, summer break, and other breaks. Ebooks are more accessible. Since it is more likely you will travel with technology, you'll have instant access at any time to read so long as you have your smartphone handy, a computer, an iPad, or another e-reading device, like a Kindle or a Nook. There's more features and options with ebooks. Many kids prefer to read off devices because it's more interactive. You can increase the font, you can look up words, you can highlight words, you can make notes, you can even turn it to the read at night feature. Now let's go over the objectives of this video training. First, we want to review the basic checkout policies. We want to show you how to access OverDrive. We want to show you how to browse for a book, learn about titles, borrow books, place a book on hold when one's already been borrowed, review your account, find the easiest way to read right away, and lastly, you'll be setting up an Adobe account. You should pause this video several times to give you time to interact with OverDrive and all its features. Now let's start with the basic checkout policy. Checking out books is free. It doesn't cost any money and there's no overdue fines. You can check out ebooks and audiobooks right now. We're also looking into possibly checking out movies and music in the future. You can read ebooks from your browser or you can download the books onto your device. And you can have up to five items checked out or borrowed at one time. You can have five items waitlisted or hold. You have 21 days or three weeks to finish your book before it expires. You can't renew a book, but you can recheck it out if it's available and no one else has a hold on it. There are no late fees because ebooks automatically are returned. You can also return your ebook early. Now we want to teach you how to access OverDrive. To access OverDrive, start by getting to the library homepage from the campus website. Simply scroll down to library, click on it, and continue. You can also access the library website by going to the IP bar, typing in cmslibrary.org, and hitting enter. Once you are at the library homepage, there are multiple access points to OverDrive. The easiest is on the homepage by just clicking on OverDrive or the OverDrive icon. You can also go to the OverDrive tab and click on the large OverDrive icon. This will get you into the sign-in screen. Students should use their eight-digit ID number and staff should use their four or five-digit ID number in order to access OverDrive. Pause this video now and sign in to OverDrive. And now I will show you how to browse for books and navigate OverDrive. And now I'll show you how to search for ebook titles. There are a few different tricks that will help you find the perfect book. There are two ways to search for an ebook in OverDrive. One way is using the headings. The other way is using the search bar or the advanced search bar. Let's start off with the headings. The first heading is subject. This will give you various genres of ebooks: biography, historical fiction, mystery suspense, science fiction and fantasy. The next category is Collections. 
This gives you different types of collections, like the most popular books, books that will always be available, picture or elementary books, middle school books, some high school books, although many high school books will not be available due to the mature content, and audiobooks. Audiobooks are books that you can listen to and download with an MP3 player, iPhone, iPod, or other smartphones. The last category or heading is levels. The two most important levels are Lexile measure and the reading level. After you click on one of the level measures, you will see a filter bar on the left hand side. This will help you search the Lexile level or reading level you're at. You can also check by subject or interest level or by rating. If you look over here, you can see that some books are shaded and some books are unshaded. The shaded book means the ebook or audiobook is available for checkout. If it's not shaded, it means the audiobook or ebook is currently unavailable but can be placed on hold. The headphones indicates it's an audiobook, where the book shows that it's an ebook. The second way to find an ebook for you is to use the search bar at the top of the screen. Simply click on the search bar, type, a, type in a title or an author, or a subject level, click enter and you will find the books. Another way you can search a book is by using the advanced search feature. Scroll down and you can pick Lexile level or reading level, you can pick the dates, you can pick any subjects from the book, maybe you want a book about drama or comic and graphic books. You can even pick languages, although there's not many languages yet. If you'd like to show books that only are available, click this small box here and then search. Pause the video now and take three or four minutes to browse for books. Now we will learn about the titles. Once I find a book I like, such as Twilight, I can click here to add it to my wish list, or I can click on the book itself. Once I click on the book, it will give me more information about the book to see if I want to borrow it or not. I can read a sample of the book by clicking here and see who the author is. There's a description of the book and you click more to get more description of it. You can get a description of the author. It even gives me a bunch of books that they recommend to me if I like this book. On the right hand side, it'll show me the different formats the book's available in. Kindle, Overdrive Read, Adobe e Publisher, and Adobe PDF. It'll show me the grade, le the reading levels, the subject is fantasy, romance, and young adult fiction, and then copies, it'll show me how many copies are available. There's one copy available, and the library has three copies. I can also rate this book after I've read it. Once I borrow the book, I just can simply click on borrow. And I've now borrowed the book. Now we will learn what to do after you borrow the book. After you borrow a book, it will take you directly to your bookshelf. If you scroll down, you can look at your account. Everyone has a limit of five books they can check out. You can see I've checked out four already, and I have one remaining that I can check out. Let's take a look at Twilight over here, which I just checked out. I can see the author, the cover of the book, I can see the different formats I can download the book, but don't worry about this now. We're going to teach you how to download in part two later. Reading in your browser is the easiest way to read a book, and we'll show you how to do that in just a second. Here's the expiration date. This is when the book will vanish from your bookshelf, and it will also vanish from your device. If you want to return the book early, just hit return title here. Now let's click on Read in Your Browser and we'll show you the easiest way to read an ebook immediately. Here Twilight is it opened in my browser. It has given me directions on how to read this book. It says click or drag to turn the page. Click and drag on the left side of the page to go back a page. Click in the middle for help. Click down here to seek through the book. To look up a word, 
or highlight a passage, click and hold for a moment, and then drag to select. Click the cover for details, and now we can start the book. You can see I am going through the book by clicking on the right part of the page. You can also skip to the first chapter by using the table of contents over here. Here's the first chapter, First Sight. If I wanted to bookmark this page because something important was on it, I could simply click on here. I could bookmark as many pages as I want. I can also highlight passages or look up words that I think are important or words that I don't know. So if, if I didn't know what the word blistering meant, I could simply hold on the word and it'll ask me if I want to highlight this word or if I want to define it. If I define it, it will take a few seconds and the definition will pop up. Again, to go back, I click on the left side of the page. To go forward, I click on the right side of the page. If I want to get rid of all these options and just read, I can click on the arrow and just read. I can do this in any device that has a browser, an iPhone, a computer, an iPad. You can also select the scale size. By going up, you can make the size much bigger. You can choose lighting, or if you're reading at night, you have that feature. You can even change the font. These are the main features on the read function, which again is the easiest way to read your book right away. Now pause this video and practice borrowing a book and reading it in your browser by clicking this blue button. Keep in mind that not every single book has this read in browser function, but most of them do. And now we will quickly show you the other features in my account. Now we will show you the help and my account features. To figure out how to download books and get other videos and help, just click the help button. When you click on my account, it will once again take you to your bookshelf. By clicking on the holds tab, you can see which books are being held for you. Lists is a great feature because it shows books that you want on your wish list, books that you rated, and books that might be recommended to you based on the other titles you've read and rated. Rating each book is great because it can show you which books you've read. Without rating a book, you will not have a tabulation of all the books that you've read. You can change also a few settings as well. Lastly, we will show you how to set up an Adobe account, which will help you, one, download eBooks, and two, download the OverDrive app. Before we show you how to sign up for an Adobe account, I want to show you a few features on the Campus Middle School Library webpage. Click on the tab OverDrive. You can access OverDrive through that icon. You can see this video. You can get extra information that are um, PDF, basic instructions, how to download to your particular device, how to return books early. There are other videos if you click here. Right now though, I want you to click on Create an Adobe Account in order to use OverDrive app. Click here. After you click on the link, you will come to this page. Most of you will not have an Adobe account, so you will want to click on this link. When creating an account, you must be very precise. The first thing I want you to do is click off the Stay Informed via email, because they're going to send you a bunch of junky emails that you don't want. You do have to read and agree the Adobe Terms and Use Policies. Next, I want you to very carefully enter your Cherry Creek School emails with numbers if they follow. The biggest mistake students make is that they can't spell cherrycreekschools.org correctly. If you spell it wrong, you will not be able to use much of the devices. Enter your first name, your last name. Your password should be your eight digit student ID number. You're gonna need to retype that and make sure that both of these. After you hit submit, it may ask you for an additional email or additional information. But look at the bottom of the page where it says skip page. Just click on that skip feature. Once you get to this page, it'll give you an overview. At this point, you don't need to do anything else. Just get out of Adobe. Now that you've created an Adobe account, now you can download the OverDrive app on all your devices. The app looks like this. This concludes part one of our OverDrive training. Part two will be scheduled in your LA teacher's classroom.
We ask on the day of part two of training that you bring your device so that you can download the ebooks or audiobooks onto your device. We will have extra devices in case you forget.